confidence among the Sri Lankan community in the UK and investors from around the world. I must say, all the challenges in Sri Lanka, RIU, have come together with Sri Lankan High Commission, especially the commercial section of the Sri Lankan High Commission, making sure these events will go ahead as planned. They've started as early as last year and has worked tirelessly to make it a success to show the world the resilience of Sri Lanka in these challenging times and give the opportunity to investors to partake in great investment opportunities. I'm pleased to be associated with this investment forum on real estate in Sri Lanka, organized by the Research Intelligence Unit with the support of the Sri Lanka High Commission in London. This uh, forum is important for us for several reasons. First, it is a forum to update you, i.e. potential investors with an interest in Sri Lanka, on progress on the Czech Port City project. You would recall that the High Commission hosted an event last October, led by uh, Honorable Champkaranagakar, Minister of Megapolis and Western Development, to promote Czech Port City uh, within the Megapolis plan. Uh, today's event is, in a sense, a uh, follow-up of that. These offshore investment opportunities also strengthen and reinforce the British Sri Lankan community's links with Sri Lanka. Tourism, of course, is a key income generator, providing direct and indirect employment to around 2 million people in Sri Lanka. I would like to request each and every one of you to visit Sri Lanka with your families and to encourage your friends to visit this beautiful island on their next holiday. Another success story has been um, a record number of exports in terms of values. Sri Lanka has um, made some progress in penetrating the global market in order to increase uh, revenue and exports. Quick overview, so apartments are not... Apartments are quite new this year. So it's about 20 to 25 years since we started seeing the um, emergence of high rise people living in Canada. Um, since the end of the war, we've seen a, a boom in the number of new projects that have come on board. Um, and we at RIA define the luxury apartment market into three tiers. Tier 1, which is priced as high as 1 to 5 million US dollars per unit. Uh, then the more affordable markets, uh, uh, the affordable market for luxury apartments starts at about uh, 15 million Sri Lankan rupees uh, and goes up to about 30. Um, and then in between is tier two. And you'll notice that uh, tier three, the affordable segment, accounts for about 60% of the market, and, and uh, tier one and tier two share uh, the balance 40%. A quick look at the main projects, I'm sure many of you have heard of uh, you know, Cinema Life, uh, Marina Square, etc., that are coming on board in the next couple of years. A lot of people talk about oversupply which is a word that has been misused, I believe. Um, especially in the context of the data, which shows that absorption is at about 60%. Um, so which, by any international standards, is pretty good. Um, but you will see that it's been a bit of a rough ride for the last eight months, uh, primarily because of the political turbulence, which is followed by the terror attack. Uh, as a result, our team has noted that an average of 5.3 sales in Q4 Last year has now become just five uh, in the last quarter. In terms of floor area, um, total floor area 5.7 million square meters. If you look at this, uh, half of this is uh, residential, and if you divide that with, uh, I suppose, an average of about 120 square meters in terms of Sri Lanka uh, apartments, um, that will be about 21,600 units. So that translates to about 10 million square feet, uh, 11 million square feet of office space. 750,000 square meters of retail. Hospitality, another 3,000 keys expected between the project itself. That project is, the project itself is massive. And we are going to create a lot of supply. So how do we intend to absorb this supply, right? Um, that's the second part of the project vision. 
building a world class city for South Asia. So if you notice the cities that I mentioned just now, whether it's London here, New York, Singapore, Dubai, all these cities are not built just to cater for the demand of the local population. They are regional hubs. Uh, in terms of location, that's the Western Megapolis. This is the master plan done by Savannah Jerome in 2015 from a Chinese company, uh, very familiar to you, the Belt Road Initiative. All right? And what you have, the Belt Road Initiative, interestingly, the one going over land is called the Belt, and the one on the sea is called the Road. All right? <laughs> so we have the Road, which is the Maritime State Road, and Sri Lanka is right here in the middle of the Road, uh, and also right in the middle of the shipping routes between Europe, Africa, to Asia. And I don't think I need to elaborate this further. My perspective on foreign investment in Sri Lanka, I've broken it into three portions. The first, as a foreign investor, we look at regulatory stability and support. Here, the government of Sri Lanka has a body dedicated to helping foreign investors for the Board of Investment. They're extremely active. The government at, the, at every level seems quite aware of the need for foreign investment and is very supportive. And policy intent is in the correct place. The second perspective from foreign investment was on the ease of doing business. Um, I was born and brought up between India and the US. So for any South Asian investor, it's a very friendly place. English speaking, culturally very similar. Very uh, the core of dedicated, well-educated bureaucrats. So coming from India, where the bureaucrat is your worst nightmare, we find Sri Lanka be very comfortable, very open, very logic and rule driven, which is a very positive place for foreign investors to come in. And of course, it's a positive, friendly, beautiful country, which I love returning to every time. Um, in terms of ease of doing business, the challenges are, that, again, policy paralysis. There has been a lot of rule changes, and there's a bit, a bit of muddling of um, powers at the bureaucratic level. So it's been difficult for agencies to understand where their role begins and ends. You all will be confused whether there is an oversupply of uh, apartments. I must uh, explain to you that now I come from a, I run the largest stockbroking firm from 2003 to 2014 period in Sri Lanka Capital Trust Securities. When the economy is down, you don't have to buy uh, securities or treasury bills. However, the population grows. So in Sri Lanka, the last five years, the population has grown in the Colombo district of 4.3%, in other words, 104,000 persons. In that period, the number of apartments constructed is only 10,000. There is uh, 2,439,000 people, in other words, 11.6% of the country's population are in Colombo district, and there is a lack of appropriate land further in Colombo because after the war there were many plots of land within four years all those plots of land got uh, bought up by high net worth individuals and developers and further the uh, reason why apartments are needed is that uh, you need a minimum of six purchases of land uh, which in turn would cost you for the land and building about over 100 million so therefore many people can't afford it Therefore, they turn to apartments. Then, as I told you, when the economy is down, when people are worried, uh, you don't buy stocks, but you don't stop getting married. For the next one year, all luxury hotels are booked. People are, whether there's problems or not, people are getting married. And I suppose 75% or more separate from their parents and they have to have a separate place. So if you can't spend to buy a land and uh, make a house, you have to buy your apartment. I don't know whether you all have realized that. So there is always, as time moves, population grows, people get married and people separate and go have to go into apartments. Then uh, the rental deals are not bad, 6 to 10%. Then uh, foreigners. There is expert professionals coming for specific projects. Then the Chinese managerial staff, Mr. Liang, 
his projects and then there is the uh, China uh, state construction, China Harbor uh, are like dominating in large projects and there is a continuous influx and a large number of uh, apartments in Colombo 3, 2, 3, 5 are being taken by the Chinese. Then uh, obviously there are inherent reasons why people want to buy apartments. Is it a buyer's market? Are you guys, uh, how would you entice people to, uh, to come in despite the various little setbacks uh, that have taken place recently? And effectively, if you look at it, all real estate, uh, whichever country, whichever sector, goes through a real estate cycle. Um, we are in this for the long haul. Our project timeline is in five years. I don't see, I mean, actually, it is a buyer's market uh, as usual it has been. And uh, I do not see any uh, drop in construction or inquiries about constructing uh, residences or any other commercial construction. But yes, to entice a little bit of, um, we get people feel more comfortable. We change our pricing scheme, and we get we put 70% of the price to be paid when we deliver, which gives people more confidence at this point. And that's been our response to. It's not just the recent events; the last six months have been really. Uh, so that's been our response to it. Uh, basically, the binding rate in 2014, which was 6.8%, went up by years uh, 13%. Well, uh, apart from the Columbo uh, Grove City project, there are other projects that we, uh, the government has undertaken to make Columbo Grove City project as well as the other projects in Columbo more viable, more viable.